everyone. We are now live with Let's Talk Food. And I want to cover, oh, by the way, before I start, my name is Pauline Abello, and I am the founder and creator of Victory Club and also the author of Hashtag Hardcore. And I want to kind of go over this. I want to dispel some myths and rumors and thoughts and wonderings on what diet is the best diet. So after countless years of research, I've probably dedicated a third of my life to researching, preparing, cooking, um, reading everything there is possible about food, keeping up to date on the newest diets and trends, and just in general observing myself. Um, I want to share with you, I think, are the conclusions to what diet really is the best diet and uh, how you can eliminate disease and illness in your family, as we have done. So first, let's just take a look at the Bible. Because I believe that's where all the truth comes from. So if I can't show you in the Bible where we can eat and what we can eat, then I think it's a waste of time. So let's look here in Genesis. Now, before you think that I'm going to say this is only vegan food, you can't eat meat, because obviously I'm in Genesis, if you know your Bible. Um, just give me a second here. Let me, let's talk. Okay, so Genesis 1.29. This is, God has just created... The heavens and the earth he's on down here in Genesis 129 he's on day six so he's made Adam and he tells him I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it they will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along along the ground everything that has breath in it and life in it Everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. So this is an interesting study you could do. He, um, I've done it a little myself, wondering about this, but he gives seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit in it to man. And then to the beasts of the earth and all the birds, he gives every green plant for food. I think the Bible is very specific. He differentiates. Um, between the two so there, there may be a reason for that a good study in there But regardless we can see that it was a vegetarian or even like sometimes vegetarian includes eggs and cheese This was a vegan diet. So God created our bodies to be vegan. This settles the argument of whether or not um, Our teeth are shaped for me or our organs are most people will say we have vegetarian type teeth Others will point to panda bears who are vegetarians and they have sharp teeth Others will say our intestines are extremely short. They're not meant for eating meat as the animals who have long intestines that eat meat. And I look here and I see the animals were eating plants in the beginning too. All Every beast and creature of the earth was eating plants. No one was eating each other in the beginning. It was very, very peaceful and happy. Um, there was no death yet. So uh, everyone was, and I see that in my dogs. My dogs, we live out, um, we have a ranch of five acres and the dogs will eat cactus fruit, they will eat apples, they will eat bananas, they they are not, meat is hard to come by sometimes, especially if you have to forage for it yourself and it's winter and the, the bunnies and the, the ground squirrels are in the ground, um, they, they'll eat whatever. So they people that think dogs only eat meat, it's not true. But then let's look what happens in Genesis 9. This is after the flood. So we go down here, um, where are we at? This is, uh, man, I just had it. Okay, here we go. Then God blessed Noah and his son. So they've been on the boat and the ark, and now they are off the ark. And this is where God gives them the rainbow. And he says to Noah and his sons, be fruitful and increase the in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall on all beasts of the earth and all birds in the sky and every creature that moves along the ground. You and I have seen that. Animals are generally afraid of us. And all fish in the sea they are given into your hands. So things are different now. Here he says, everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, now I give you everything. So everything is food. So this to me, this makes me wonder. I have several questions in my mind when I read this passage. Like one, obviously, meat is fine. You cannot be a Christian and say that meat is condemned or outlawed. God clearly allows meat here. Jesus ate fish and Jesus ate meat. Uh, this Bible verse right here shows that God gave humans meat to eat. The question that comes to me is how much, when, how often? I think 
if we weren't living, and I'll get into my thoughts later, but I think if we weren't living in our American society, you would be less inclined to eat as much meat as you do. And the idea that some people have that the cave, first of all, I don't believe in caveman. I believe it started in Genesis 1, but that cavemen were roaming around and all they did was eat meat. First of all, they thought cavemen were very stupid. So if cavemen were roaming around, it, it's actually pretty difficult to get meat. It's so much easier to plant a carrot that doesn't run away. Like you put the seed in the ground, actually the ground, like most of my carrots grow back by themselves. I have millions in my garden right now because they went to seed. Um, it's pretty simple. You just pull it up and there's this amazing food ready to eat. Half of my garden replants itself. So it's so much easier to go harvest food from a garden. And we live in the desert, by the way, this is Arizona desert. And we are able to grow like all of our produce in the garden. All of our vegetables that we need, we can grow in the garden. And they grow back themselves. The onions, the leeks, they just grow back themselves once they go to seed. If you, you know, if you have the right mulch and everything, it's plenty of water, even in the desert. So it's so much easier for me. Now, on the flip side, when we moved into our ranch, we also had chickens and turkeys and goats, and we have slaughtered them all. And let me just tell you, it is extremely unpleasant. I know a lot of people that moved to the country hoping, you know, to do that, to have their own organic meat. And they became, one, extremely dissatisfied with the amount of work. I mean, to pluck the feathers, scald the chicken, cut out the insides, not to mention just killing them is somewhat traumatic, at least for me it was. I mean, my husband would always do it, and I would never do it. And just, I mean, killing the turkey, they flap their wings so crazy. The goat, they're like, you know, you, you, you don't have a gun back then. Like, the, you know, hey, man, you have a gun. You, had, you have to slit their throat. And it's very, very traumatic to raise a goat from a baby and have to do that. I mean, you really get the seriousness. Um, you know, I think the Israelites would have had the very much the seriousness when they had to slaughter an animal for their sin because they, they had to do that. So let's, so let's say it's not easier to, um, to go out and kill me. But I do want to say that it's allowed. So let's move on to Daniel. Daniel is the last verse I want to share with you. So here we see it's the third year um, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, besieged it. So we're at the point where Israel has been taken over by Babylon. Um, this was predicted. The Lord delivered um, the king, the Israelite king, into his hands. And let's see. So then let's move on to verse 4. So Nebuchadnezzar and his chief, uh, he ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome. And here's the key I want to show you. Daniel was one of these men. So he was young, without physical defect. I mean, he had all his arms and legs, I suppose. He happened to be handsome. I guess that matters. And here he was showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand. So they were looking for smart guys. They weren't looking for idiots. It was you know, pretty much the, the cream of the crop. And so here, but not only was he cream of the crop, he was a man dedicated to God and he wasn't going to be eating pork or any of the things that God would not allow, or perhaps even the way they killed the meat was not done in a way that was kosher. So he resolved to not defile himself with the royal food and wine. Um, perhaps even the wine. I know I see kosher grape juice in the stores, so they must have had it must be kosher wine too. You know what's allowed. There must be a way that it's not okay to eat. So he wouldn't eat, want to eat that food. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself. And the guy was nice to him and, and said, yes, but I'm afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink. And why would he see you looking worse? Remember, they apparently wanted them to be handsome. Worse than the other men of your age. The king would have my head because of you. So he's like, if I make you look bad, the king's going to kill me. And Daniel then said to the guard, please test your servants for 10 days. I mean, what can go wrong in 10 days? Like, you're not going to die in 10 days. That's a good enough time for a survey. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat, water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with that which you see. So he tested them for 10 days. He agreed to that little test. And lo and behold, on a vegetarian diet, vegan diet. At the end of 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So then the guard just went ahead and took away all their choice food and wine, and he made them all eat vegetables instead. So 
Um, and then it said to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds. And so he increased their knowledge even more. So these men had a certain kind of wisdom and understanding and awareness. And so this just goes to show that um, there's something about the, the vegetables of the earth that God has given um, great healing powers to, healing ability, healing properties, whatever you want to call it. So um, I hope that just kind of gives you an idea. This is just from the Bible. Now let's kind of look at the science, um, what we know from just having the ability to look under a microscope. So what, I'm, what I talk about in my book, Hashtag Hardcore, is when you are trying to heal yourself of a disease or illness, let's say you have cancer, let's say your family is really sick, you've got people throwing up or they've got colds, all of these are signs that something in your body is not working properly. You need to go on the real Daniel diet. Now, I, should, I do want to notice here, um, the guy, the, the pastor of Salabat Church, Rick Warren, he made a book called The Daniel Diet. And he has them eating shellfish and things in that book. I mean, he's got some, he's got some people in that book that are helping him, some nutritionists and doctors and whatever. And so they even recommend like shellfish. And I'm like, that is, they recommend eating clean meats. It's really an eat clean diet. It is not the Daniel diet. So do not go pick up that book thinking you're getting a raw vegan diet um, or a vegan diet. It's not that at all. It's just a, in general, eat clean diet, um, cut out bad foods and junk. Yeah, so it's not truly the Daniel diet. So what we're talking about here is eating a mostly raw food diet. What I believe is um, what what people would have eaten up until the last 100, 150 years or so, maybe 200 years before um, processing food became easier and easier. Living out on our ranch, we have orchards, we have vineyards, we have fruit trees, we have nut trees. And I tell you what, when I go outside and it's lunchtime and I just see nuts and I've got grapes growing and I've got peaches. I just go make a meal of the trees. Um, it's incredible. Just, you know, eat as many apricots until I feel full. Like you can't get easier than that. Like, do I want to do that or go kill a chicken and have to cut its throat and then let all the blood bleed out and pluck all the feathers and boil it. I mean, we've done that. You have to gut, all, you have to gut it and then you have to cook it. So um, it is tremendously easier. And when I study, there's some, there are some people that still have that kind of way of life out in Mexico and things. And the times they eat meat are rarely, we're talking like special occasions. Animals also require food. I mean, unless you've got tons of grass to forage, you've gotta be growing the seed to feed the chickens. Um, they just, same with the goats, they eat a tremendous amount of hay. Uh, it's, it's not as easy to grow animals as you, or to raise animals as you think. It's much easier just to eat the food raw, not even bother cooking, you know, cook the apricots and just go eat them. Um, so we call food raw if it is uncooked, never heat above 118 degrees. I usually, like in my dehydrator, I won't even set it above 105. Now, um, just to be super safe that it's completely raw, like I know for sure it's raw, but it's probably fine at 118. Uh, unprocessed is fresh or wild. Um, I guess you could eat raw fish and things, but you need to be careful of that. So we'll just say unprocessed, as fresh as possible. So it's great if it comes right out of your garden. And then organic. Um, I'm not going to go spend an arm and a leg to eat 100% organic. So unless I grow it, um, like apples, I try and avoid GMO for sure. I don't get too worried about the pesticides on the apples or things. I mean, if you have the money to buy nothing but organic, by all means, it's better. Usually, sometimes I do try and buy mostly organic apples. But um, bananas. I, I just don't worry about it, guys. The detoxing effects of eating this way is going to detox all this junk. But when and if possible, preferably, definitely eat organic if you can. Um, we're getting to the, our goal is to grow our own food so we don't have to spend the, you know, the ton of money on organic. Plus, I'm not happy with this label. They really need to change the word organic because there's a certain amount of pesticides and bad farming practices with some of the big organic companies that um, I think they shouldn't even be allowed to be called organic. So um, anyway, I don't fret about it. And I just eat in a way that my body is constantly detoxing out the, the pesticides. And if I have the choice and the money and the budget, we do, do, we do go organic. But um, anyway, it's not a make or break to do this kind of a diet. So why would you want to eat raw food? Uh, the biggest thing is it kills the enzymes. So enzymes uh, help you digest your food. The body can create enzymes 
but that process takes a ton of energy. It makes you feel tired and heavy. Sometimes if you, it's hard for the, the body to even keep up. And they're not as effective as the ones that were destroyed in your food. To know if a food has enzymes, it's simple. It can grow again. Like if you cut the top off of a carrot and you put it in water, the carrot top will keep growing. Uh, but if you were to cook that carrot top, it obviously you've killed all the enzymes. It won't, it can't reproduce anymore. It's not alive. Enzymes mean the food is alive and it digests itself, which is incredible. Um, it's the same process that happens with raw milk. That it just the enzymes in it are alive, so it turns into yogurt. Whereas if you have pasteurized milk, it just spoils and goes stinky rotten. So enzymes are the key to life, the key to longevity, the fountain of youth. And they're the key to living a long life. They are literally not only how to look amazing for a long time, but how to live a long time. Okay, so people who have a hard time with indigestion, burping, um, acid reflux, a lot of it is your food is not being broken down as well. Um, a lot of times they're eating um, cooked foods or they're not getting enough sleep. And I mean, that, that's something different though, but they're not getting enough sleep and their body is really taxed and it can't digest the foods well. So, but either way, eating the raw foods um, definitely helps because they're not as hard to digest. Um, and then also, there's a study that was done on mosquitoes. I can't remember the exact name of the study, but they just found that in the life of the short life of these little mosquitoes that they only had a limited number of enzymes. So once you've depleted your enzymes, so let's say you're always eating cooked food and you're forcing your body over and over and over again to make these enzymes to digest the food in your gut, that once you've exhausted that supply of enzymes, life is over for you. So that you could actually extend your life um, by not forcing your body to do so much work. Make it easier on your body. The, the food is supposed to come with enzymes to digest itself. So don't make your body do so much work. Um, let, the, let the food digest itself. Don't make your body make the enzymes. Um, so that I found really interesting and I think that there's just not enough people who are interested in doing this study to prove it's true or not, but um, I've heard it several times. So it's just it's like that with all the natural food movement. You, you have these interesting things that you want to learn about and um, the medical community, the, the, the big dogs, they're not interested in anything but drugs. And so all the studies are done on drugs. But I wish there was more studies done on um, really cool things like this. Okay, so in my book, Hashtag Hardcore, we talk about the importance of the pH of food. And that, that took a couple pages in the book to explain, so I won't go into here, but it's really important to keep your body alkaline. Our bodies are designed um, by God to be alkaline. So you remember those pH strips in science class where you would stick it in something and it would be neutral like water or acidic or alkaline? Our body is designed to be alkaline. And cooked food, anything you burn, becomes cancerous. Um, the more you cook it, the more acidic it becomes. The foods that are alkaline that you want to eat primarily to keep your body in the alkaline state are vegetables and fruits. Uh, when you get into grains, you get a little more acidic. You get into meat, you get very acidic, and you get into cheese, and it's especially pasteurized cheese, is extremely acidic. And then when you get into soda, sh processed sugar, it is the most acidic thing you could eat. You want to avoid those completely. You want to avoid those completely. So keeping your food, keeping your body primarily alkaline by eating primarily alkaline foods. Alkaline foods. Um, disease here. Eating acidifying food makes your body a welcome feeding ground for disease. Cancer thrives in an acidic body. It loves acid. It will starve in an alkaline body. So this is giving you some hints on where we're going with how to heal disease, how to prevent and heal it. Okay. Um, eating raw food makes it easier for your body to absorb minerals and hard to absorb minerals. So um, it just it's, it helps with the mineral the mineral absorption. When you when you cook your food, you destroy most of the vitamins. You kill all of the enzymes, and you destroy most of the vitamins. And like I said, we talked before, you destroy the life force. Eating cooked food is dead food. You have a living body that has living cells that requires living food. If you feed it nothing but cooked dead food most of the time, and I'm talking like 75% of your diet is cooked dead food, you're gonna feel heavy and tired. Live food has energy, it gives you energy. Um, obviously a raw seed will grow and a cooked seed won't. Um, when you pick a raw fruit, it ripens for weeks. Cooked fruit would decay you know, almost immediately. So th this is why having a primarily raw diet 
will make you more energetic, energetic and a stronger immune system. Not just because of um, the raw, that's a huge part of it, but also because of the content of the food. Uh, meat and cheese and dairy, uh, they, lack, they lack all fiber. They have a lot of macronutrients, but they lack almost all the micronutrients. You just can't get the same amount of nutrition as you can in the raw foods. So what are some benefits you can expect of eating a raw or mostly raw food diet? They're endless. Um, you're going to have better health, for sure. When you do this, this is how you eliminate the cold. This is how you eliminate disease. This is how you eliminate sickness. You will not get sick anymore. It is impossible to get sick on a healthy diet like this. It's impossible. You will not get sick. So I know it's hard to hear, and it sounds crazy, and we all just assume that sickness is um, – it was actually Louis Pasteur who, who said the immune system is nothing, uh, the germ is everything. And there was this French guy who was his contemporary, and he said, no, 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 you've got it all wrong. The germ is nothing, the immune system is everything. The germ is nothing. I have absolutely no fear taking my kids into a room full of people with chicken pox or the cold or anything because their immune systems are so strong, they cannot get sick. They can't get sick. It's impossible for them to get sick their immune systems will resist it. And so um, that's how God made us to be. He made us to not be sick. You don't need to be sick. So when your diet consists of more than 75% raw foods, um, these are some things that will happen. You'll have more energy. You possibly could need less sleep. You'll feel fuller faster, which is weight loss without trying. Your skin will clear up. You can say goodbye to acne. You will no longer get acne. You'll have clarity of mind and better memory, improved immune system, we just talked about that, improved fertility, people heal their fertility issues. You'll prevent reverse diabetes, cancer, you name it. Your body odor will leave. You'll no longer have to wear deodorant when you, you do a raw food diet. Here's why. When you eat meat and things, it goes through your intestines and it rots. And so that is smelly, right? It's stinky. So that stinkiness um, comes out through your your armpits, which is one of your main detoxing places. So you sweat under your arms and the, the rottenness and the badness comes out through your armpits. So I see these talk shows, I don't watch them, but I've, I've seen them like when I was at, uh, I don't know, they were on TV somewhere where I was at, waiting in a waiting room. And they, these women are plugging up their armpits, like they're doing a surgery or something where their armpit will no longer sweat. And I just think, oh, the stupidity of these people, like the craziness of this. Like that is so important that your body is able to sweat and release those toxins, especially the way I'm sure they're eating. They need to allow that stink to come out because that's how God made it. But the cool thing is when you eat a raw food diet, you no longer stink. So you do sweat. I mean, that's just part of life. But the sweat isn't leave like a gross yellow pit stain and it doesn't smell. So um, it's no big deal. The other thing is you will no longer sunburn. I forgot that. When you stop eating meat, um, sunburn and skin cancer are, again, are just like any other cancer. It's an immune system that has been totally weakened. It can't protect itself from the sun. Do you really think that God is going to tell Adam in the next chapter, oh, hey, you have to till the ground and work it, but I'm not going to give you sunscreen? No, that's not what God intended at all. So there's no reason that um, God would have done that. You know, and it just doesn't make any sense. And then, like I said, I spent a third of my life observing, experimenting. I've seen, I've read this, I've experimented, I've seen it myself. When you don't eat meat, it doesn't even matter if it's Arizona sun, 110 degrees, you don't need sunblock because your immune system and your skin is so resistant, it can handle the sun. Oh, not to mention, God wants us to have sun. Not only did he prevent our skin from sunburning if you treat it right, but he also made it a requirement. The only way you can naturally get vitamin D is through the sun. That is the best and most potent way to get vitamin D, not vitamin D fortified milk, which is fake. It's truly through this, they've added that, it's truly through the sun that you get your vitamin D. And we are at an epidemic rate in America. People are lacking from vitamin D because they don't go outside. And when they do, they, everything has sunblock. Their, their lotions, their makeup, it all has sun, sunblock in it and they're covered up. So vitamin D is crucial. God makes your body need it, and he gave us the tools that we need to prevent sunburn. You also won't be thirsty. I'm pretty much never thirsty because my food is filled with water. Now, should I eat some cooked food or have a meal that has more cooked food than I'm used to or it's Thanksgiving? I can't tell you. I experience thirst for, like, for the first time ever. 
I really don't drink that much water. And when I have a cooked meal, I think, oh my goodness, this is what most people feel like all the time. They're so thirsty and they need, they're like, I need to drink water all the time. I hear you because your food has that all the water cooked out of it. So it's like this dry powder practically or this dry crusty cookedness in your stomach and your body is like, give me water. So this is to help you out, hashtag hardcore. For a while on my website, this book is downloadable for free. So it has 21 days worth of meals. And we're going to take a look at a few of the meals um, in my fitness pal and how I want to show you how easy it is to get a bunch of raw foods in your day, almost completely raw foods with just 15 to 20% of your calories coming from cooked foods and still being vegan. I'm going to assume that most of, that many of you watching this um, are trying to heal something or you still experience illness and sickness and you probably should go through a cleanse. Um, you don't even know, you could have cancer growing inside your body is the very unfortunate truth of it that when you get cancer, many people are getting cancer in their 30s and 40s and you don't get it overnight. It's not like something that pops up overnight. It builds and grows in your system until finally a doctor can diagnose it and see it or you have a pain and you notice it. It could be growing inside you unknown. So I recommend that everyone starts with that, with the hardcore diet. And the book I'm currently working on writing is called Superhuman. So once you've gone through that um, phase, then you can move on to the superhuman diet. And we'll do a different webinar about that. But that really goes into Genesis 9, how much meat and when to eat it. But still, it's still a primarily raw food diet. Um, it would only be in that 15% of your calories, um, maybe at dinner, after you've had some awesome raw food, what could you eat um, to, to have some cooked foods, some animal products in your diet? But I do not recommend that um, because like I said, animal products are very acidic. So if you have cancer or diabetes, which is a problem with too much fat in your diet, you really need to go on a raw vegan diet um, for at least 30 days or until your illness is healed. If it's cancer, it could be three to six months. And so you just have to be honest with yourself. If you're willing to go hardcore, you can skip the chemotherapy, which chemotherapy is basically, you're just hoping your white blood cells are stronger than what the chemotherapy is gonna do. It's basically poison, it's gonna kill you. So um, it's, it's killing your body and you're just hoping your white blood cells are stronger. But if you're sick enough to get cancer, um, you're sick enough to, to not have white, strong white blood cells. And many people, many, many people are not killed by the cancer. They're ultimately killed by the chemotherapy. And so, um, but whatever path you choose, you know, the Lord, pray, pray, pray about it. But I highly recommend being on hashtag hardcore, no matter what path you're on. So take a look at this book. It's free for a download for a limited time. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, I'm not sure if it'll, it's going up on, the reason why is it's going on Amazon soon. That's just a sell, that's the place to sell books, people. And Kindle um, is the place to have an ebook. So the thing is, though, Amazon requires that they have the best deal. So, but I want to make this available while I can. So until I get up on Amazon and they want to have the best deal possible, that's just a requirement they have for selling stuff on there. Um, is that they really have the corner in the market? Uh, it, it is free, um, but honestly, it's it's got a lot of beautiful pictures in it. I took the pictures myself, and um, every recipe pretty much has a picture. I think every single recipe. 99% of the recipes had a picture, which I appreciate, especially if it's food you're not used to, to see what it's supposed to look like, to see if it looks good, because they are, they're tasty. I didn't put junk in here. I put good tasting recipes that will help you on this diet, help you heal your body. Um, but when it goes on Amazon, it's available for purchase. Uh, I think it will be a better format because it's just not meant to be an ebook with all the big color photography. It's kind of hard to view that on a Kindle device or even on your computer screen. It's just better sometimes to have a book in your hands, especially a recipe book. So look for that, you can download it on the homepage. All right, moving on, let's take a look at um, what this might look. So a lot of you are in Victory Club, and um, let me just give you the link for Victory Club. www. oops, getleanwithpauline.com slash victory dash club. So this is my fitness group, people who are trying to lose weight or even people who are just trying to eat healthier. You don't have to necessarily need to lose weight. But this is the link to get into Victory Club. And it's just a free group. I send out free trainings. Like this one went on the email broadcast. 
And then also we have a Facebook group where people, if they want, they can do a daily check-in, they can participate in the daily check-in, compete in the competition. Uh, just a way to encourage each other, motivate each other. Uh, it's a very active group. So you can join this group. And um, in the group, one of the questions came up is, how can I fit in so many um, vegetables in a day? Because I, I, I gave bonus points in the competition if you could eat at least 500 of your calories from raw food. And I know that's a struggle in the typical American diet, even when you convert your typical American diet to clean eating, uh, it's still a struggle because you know you have organic meats and you have organic eggs and all these things, but your mindset is still big big steak thing, you know, maybe like a, lots of maybe gravy on it, I don't know. And then a side of like green beans, maybe at lunch you have like eight or nine raspberries. So this is really the crucial part is to show you how much food you actually get to eat and how little calories it is. So here's where the weight loss is effortless. Um, let me just, let's just go over this first. So this would be a day from taking some of the recipes from the hashtag hardcore. So this would be like a smoothie. If you've never used my fitness pal before, I highly recommend it. And I'll show you why it's so awesome in a second. Um, but let's say in my smoothie, I have two bananas. So think how often you eat one banana. Raw food diet, you're gonna be eating a lot of food and it's awesome. You're never ever hungry. <laughs> you get to eat a lot of food. And it's amazing and the food all tastes so good. And let's make these freckly so they're sweet. Um, silk almond milk, they didn't have like raw sprouted almond milk on here. I like to make my own almond milk, but if you do use almond milk, get the unsweetened vanilla. Do not get the stuff with cane juice in it. Um, they'll probably have some mostly natural preservatives. Making your own almond milk is better, and I have a recipe for that in the book. But, uh, you know, whatever, it works. Not very many calories. Honey, if you're still, if their bananas aren't super freckly, which means their sugars have matured, um, you could put a tablespoon of honey in if you wanted, or a couple drops of stevia extract um, or stevia tincture, which is not the white stevia, which is not good for you. Maybe. To make this chocolatey, I would do two tablespoons of raw cacao, which is gonna give me some fat in the diet there too. All right, then lunch will move. Okay, so a few hours after breakfast, maybe I'll have, this is two apples, by the way, two large Fuji, so these are huge apples. Maybe I'll have one really large Fuji. Okay, then I'll have maybe a teaspoon of Barley Max. I'll do one teaspoon. So Barley Max is a green, barley alfalfa juice powder. It's a dehydrated juice. It's not a whole food. It's a, it's a juice and it's full of so many vitamins and minerals and nutrients. I highly recommend it. Um, so I'll do one teaspoon of that. Then at lunch, I'll have three cups of baby kale, five cups of romaine. So we're thinking like huge bowl, like get out your big bowl, not your tiny, like most people think salad, like little side salad, big old plate of pasta. No. Huge, huge amount of food. We're eating lots of wonderful food. We're not going to be hungry. Then this is a this is just right off the top of my head, guys. You can make your salad however you want, but I put like a half of I think this is a half of an avocado. So really, I couldn't make it do a quarter, but um, or I guess I probably could have. I would have done half of what that serving was. So this is a half of avocado, which is probably a little more fat than you may maybe need. And then I put a tomato in there. And the, there's no dressing for what the dressing I would use, but one of our favorite dressings in the family in the hashtag hard door, hardcore plan in that book is a lemon dressing. So yummy. And it, the calories would be negligible, so I didn't even list it. So just this amazing dressing with some avocado, make it fat and creamy, some tomato, and you've got this amazing lunch. And then later, after lunch, or maybe with lunch, I'll have another apple, Maybe a couple hours later, I'll have an orange. So my snacks, I've had this Fuji apple, another Fuji apple, and an orange. And then later, I'll have another teaspoon of Barley Max. So I am literally never hungry. <clears throat> Dinner. You'll have, uh, let's say we do the, in the hashtag hardcore, let's say we're adding some cooked beans to our meal. So we did one cup and I am going to say ignore the sodium here. I did not make these beans. And so that seems like a lot of sodium to me. 
the pico de gallo seems like a lot of sodium here too. So I think these people must have added a lot of salt, uh, which is not necessary when foods are flavored well. So you'll have your beans, you'll have a cup of pico de gallo, a cup of beans, and then like five cups of romaine. If there were other vegetables, I'd throw those on too, whatever you like. And just have this amazing dinner with your cooked beans, and then you're good. So let's see. This is someone who's trying to lose weight. When you're losing weight on my fitness pal, and this is, you need to go back to video one if you're not sure how to lose weight and why calories matter. But this is effortlessly, like I wasn't even bothering to look at the calories. And here we are at 1500, which is typically what people will eat to lose about two pounds a week. A normal person needs about 2000. If you're working out maybe 2,500 calories each week. So this will definitely have you losing about two pounds per week if you're working out. Um, if you're not working out, you might lose a pound a week without even trying just by eating like this, eating a ton of food like this. Is that not hashtag amazing? I think it's pretty sweet. Not only are you eating all this wonderful food, because remember you're trying to heal your body, but all these foods are healing you, you get to eat pretty much unlimited amounts of food. Like That's going to totally fill you up. Now, in... In the beginning, your stomach is going to be like, whoa, I'm used to having an egg, and that's it. And that, the egg alone, is you know 300 calories. And so you're not used to eating this much food. You're going to fill up faster than I will. Um, I can easily eat eight cups of salad, the avocado, and all the tomato. And I seriously look crazy. I have this giant bowl of salad in front of me. In the beginning, it's going to be a little more difficult for you. Um, but... That's why it's so effortless to lose weight because you're going to feel totally full as your stomach is stretching out. As you lose your weight, um, your stomach will expand how it should ought to be to accommodate food and enjoy food and not feel like you're starving all the time. And then by that point, you can eat, you might be at the point in your, where your fitness journey where you need to eat a little more. I mean, that just depends. As you lose weight, you, you don't need to you know restrict yourself so much. So here's a cool function of the app on your phone. So I don't know how to do it in the online version, so I'm going to show you just how it works on your phone and why this is cool. But let's say you scroll down under like exercise, which is the last thing. This is the same meal plan I just showed you. You click nutrition. And so let's pretend I just click that. And then we'll go over here. Oops, wrong way. This is my daughter, isn't she? She's so sweet. This is my Amazon Cloud account where I store all of my photos. Okay, here we are. So I click that button that said nutrition, and then up here it'll say calories, nutrients, macros. You want to be on the macros. That's carbs, fats, and protein. So my goal, you can change the goal settings so it doesn't yell at you every time you eat more than 50% of your diet from carbs, which I think is so stupid. Our brains run on glucose, and the only place you can get glucose is from carbs. The people who are um, really into the low-carb diets uh, and eat tons of meat, let's go eat tons of meat and tons of fat. Don't eat hardly any vegetables. Um, don't, definitely don't eat wheat. Those diets um, are starving your brain. And so what your body has to do is it has to pull the glucose it needs from your fat, which is a cancerous process. Um, it's very dangerous for your body. And they are able to lose weight that way because their body is converting fat into glucose. Um, but it's extremely cancerous, extremely bad for you. They're eating all this acidic food. And so, yet again, science proves that God designed our brains to run on carbs. We need to be eating carbs. So my goal, um, especially if you're on the hashtag hardcore and you're an adult, if you're a child, you'll want to eat about 50% cooked food um, just so you have more calories in your diet. And, um, but as you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to heal something, you really need to limit your fat and protein because these are acidic foods. These are the foods that cancer loves. Cancer loves excess protein. Cancer loves fat. So 80, 10, 10 is a great goal for someone who is on the hashtag hardcore plan. If you're trying to heal cancer, you really need to follow the juicing section in the hashtag hardcore plan. You need to be drinking about eight vegetable juices a day in addition to your diet. Don't worry about losing weight. It'll, it'll come and it'll happen. You, need, you really need to be flooding your body with nutrition, which only comes from the raw fruits and vegetables. That is the only healing nutrition. People who eat these high-protein, high-fat diets um, and they um, experience a little bit of healing, it's largely because they've cut out sugar. Like a lot of these plans advocate eating clean, and so they'll experience a little bit of healing, and they're super excited. 
but they'll be on these diets for three or four years and they just never completely heal. And it's because there's just not enough nutrition in animal broth in animal bones, the only reason the animal had any nutrition at all is because he first ate the grass or he ate an animal that ate the grass. It always comes back to the greens. So if you want to get the most concentrated form of nutrition, you need to eat the greens yourself. You need to be eating the kale, the romaine, the oranges. And Barley Max to me, it's not totally necessary unless you are trying to heal cancer. I would say get it for sure. But um, it just is such a super concentrated form of nutrition. So I, I have it like a vitamin. Like it's just extra bonus. If you're already healed, not necessary, but it's amazing stuff. So why not have it? I can afford it. No big deal. Um, but anyway, you really want to focus on if you're trying to heal, eating more close to 80, 10, 10. So um, I would say if you're not someone who has cancer, and you're just doing the hashtag hardcore plan, anywhere 80, 10, 10, or somewhere like a like this, you could see on that meal plan, I hit 7, 2, 17, 11. That was because we had the avocado and the raw cacao made this number a little higher. There might have been something else that had some fat in it. Um, yeah, let's see. The avocado had a lot in the raw cacao. So that was mainly where it came from. The beans had negligible, and the almond milk had a little. So you could modify that if you want to stay closer to 80, 10, 10. But um, 60, 20, 20 would be pushing it for me. But if you were already healthy, I think that would be fine. Um, but just remember that the biggest problems in America, and I go into that pretty detailed in the book, the biggest problems with all of our disease is we eat way too much fat and way too much protein. Fat totally inhibits your body and just too much fat. It's just not good. And like I said, I told you about the native peoples. It's just you just easier not to eat fat. And our brain wants glucose. It wants the carbs. It's just so hard to go out and kill an animal. It's just not done as much as you would have done to eat in a garden. So between the Bible, showing you the benefits of our raw food diet and all the awesome stuff, and then also showing you Daniel had great results. Um, I hope that I can have kind of given you, and then my own experience, just how we've healed ourselves. Um, there's just, I think, some overwhelming things to show that this is a really incredible diet. It takes discipline because you're used to eating really rich foods. We're a rich country and we're used to eating, you know, you can go to the store and pick up a six pack of chickens for so much money. You know, it's just not, and the government subsidizes meat. So they actually, if they had to, if we had to pay the true cost of meat, I bet you anything you'll be eating less meat, but the government subsidizes meat. So it's actually cheaper than it should be. Um, anyway. Here's another cool bonus. So I, I mentioned uh, having eaten a raw food diet. This video to me is just so cool. I'm going to show you just a couple of clips. And because I'm speaking on a microphone, I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but I'll talk through it. So this is a news. Um, they did a, a report on this woman. Her name is Annette Larkins. And I just want to show you what people like. Also, the proof is in the pudding. Like I just say, go look at some people who eat mostly raw and um, who really are truly eating mostly raw, like this woman juicing and, and eating a raw food diet, and look at how they look. And then look at people who eat um, you know, high saturated fat, high fat diet, high protein diet, and see how they look when they get older. Um, I told you that the, the benefits of eating a raw food diet is life and longevity, and, and your skin looks good. You basically, it's like the fountain of youth. So I just, this woman to me is incredible. So this is her little garden. The story of her, and you, I'll put the link um, in the comment section of this YouTube video, but this is her husband, right? Like she looks like she looks like his granddaughter. And he says that in the video that people will ask them like, who are you, why are you like kissing your granddaughter? And so um, she eats only raw, so she's a 100% raw foodist, um, which you know is an option. And she's obviously lean, her skin looks amazing. He owned a meat, packing company or something or a meat a butcher whatever and he has heart problems now he chose to continue eating the way he's always ate since the beginning of our marriage but for the last 27 years but for their marriage she chose to eat raw food and she has all of course all this cool stuff growing so she's eating a lot of her own produce and juicing things and here's where they tell you the craziness she's 72 years old and she just looks amazing compared to you know, her husband who looks every bit 72. 
So, and then this is, I think, a neat picture of some different famous raw food vegans and how young, like 56, 60 years old, 52 years old, 75. You could have guessed, I don't know, I would have guessed maybe in her 40s, like maybe possibly late 40s. There's Annette Larkins at 72, 64. To me, that's just incredible, the youth and vitality we get from having, um, you know, you get beautiful skin. It's just the enzymes in the food, they're alive, they're living and they're healing and they're not working against you. Um, some people think, well, I'll, I'll incorporate some raw foods, but I don't want to go, you know, full bore. I don't want to, I don't want to do the complete thing. So I'll eat some raw, I'll eat some vegan, but I'll also still keep my cookies and sugar and junk food and, and maybe half of my diet is meat and animal products. And the problem with that is you will experience none of the benefit. You'll feel like you're sacrificing, but you will experience none of the benefit. And here's why. So let's say you have a car and you put in your car a really high expensive octane or, I don't know, gasoline, really good gasoline, and it's really expensive. But then once a week, you're eating um, or you're putting in your car a cup full of sand. And you do that maybe even daily. You're putting in a cup of sand if you eat you know, bad foods daily. How long do you think it's going to be before your car totally gunks up and breaks? And it's just, that's just the point is that our bodies are very similar to the car is that we don't, you don't, um, you can't cancel. They don't cancel each other out. It's not like a negative one and a positive one. They cancel each other out. The good foods are good, but the bad foods are so much more destructive that they just don't cancel out. You really need, if you are trying to heal or lose weight, I highly recommend, eat, especially if you're trying to heal, going, um, following the hashtag hardcore plan. Um, it's nothing that I've com I've made up. I put my own spin on it. I, of course, put the Bible verses in it because I'm a Christian. But um, we've known this kind of diet for a long time is what's healing. Daniel knew it back, you know, in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. So um, this is just, a, it's just a healing diet. So this is what I would recommend you look more into. And like I said, for a limited time, it's free. And if you want to join our community, get leanwithpauline.com slash victory dash club uh, to learn more about losing weight. Um, we teach you how to lose weight, how to do it quickly and safely and effectively. I myself lost 70 pounds. Um, lots of other people have lost weight in our group. And, uh, and then also how to get support, you know, as you're trying to change your diet and clean up your diet. That's, that's huge. It's, it's a huge benefit to have the encouragement of people in there. So check that out. And of course, subscribe, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. I put out videos weekly. I love to review kitchen products. Um, so you'll see a lot of those kinds of videos the cool new gadgets that um, I call it trash or treasure as I open them up and try them out. I'm a, I'm a kitchen gadget queen. I cook so much that I need time savers. Well, anyway, thank you so much for viewing this and I will see you guys next week.